I like to say that anything that you love as a child is connected to your inner child, which is directly connected to source. As soon as I started doing everything that I loved, there was a surge of power, a surge of confidence. I wasn't insecure anymore because the emotion that had the most dominance in my thought process and in my heart process was actually being paid attention to. Everybody, welcome to Impact Theory. Our goal with this show and company is to introduce you to the people and ideas that will help you actually execute on your dreams. Today's guest is one of the most fascinating rags to riches stories I have ever heard. He was born in the third ward of Houston, Texas. His father was an abusive, alcoholic drug dealer who was murdered when he was just 12 years old. And by the time he was a teenager, he was breaking into cars and houses and his criminal activities continued to escalate until he was sentenced to 12 years in a French prison for drug smuggling. Fortunately, he only ended up serving two and a half years of his sentence and recognizing immediately he'd been given a second chance, he cleaned up his act and threw himself into his passion for music. After a chance encounter with the actor and hip hop artist Ludacris, he signed a half million dollar deal with DTP Records. And suddenly he was writing hit songs for major artists such as 2 Chains and dating American Idol winner Jordan Sparks. But it all happened way too fast. He was playing the part of the famous rock star, but secretly he was living out of his car and drowning in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. For more than two years, he lived in his car until one day he hit rock bottom. And knowing he had to make a drastic change, he quit the record label, changed the group of people he was hanging out with, and went to work on his mindset. He read The Power of Positive Thinking 282 times, took total responsibility for his life, and began focusing on value creation. And from that, he was able to build multiple six-figure businesses, going from massively in debt to the 1%, and establishing himself as one of the premier motivational speakers on the planet. So please, help me in welcoming the man who was invited to speak in nearly 30 countries last year, the author of the upcoming book, Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life, Garen Jones. Welcome to the show, man. That was one hell of an entrance. Dude, that's one hell of a life. <laughs> so it is insane to me where you started, where you've gone, and where you've ended up now. And what I really want to start with is how do you leverage rock bottom? Because most people hit it and that's just where they stay. So how did you turn that into something that's amazing and beautiful? You know, when I was at rock bottom, I didn't know that I was at rock bottom. And you can't really change what you're not aware of. And so it was like one of those things where it's like, can it get any worse? Bam! Can it get any worse? Bam! And it just, I kept asking the question, can it get any worse? I didn't know that what I was asking was causing my life. So it was to the point where either I die or I do something about it because it was like, I, I didn't have, my, 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 my daughter pretty much was like, you're not my father, you don't know what love is. My girlfriend had just broke up with me. And you know, my mother was pretty much, she had 16 different, um, what is it called? She was on 16 different medications. There was so much stuff going on and I'm watching all of these people be successful and I'm like, I'm more talented than them and I don't understand why I'm still in the exact same spot, which I didn't know was rock bottom. And then it one day it just all came crashing down and I was like, why am I here? I remember lying down in the middle of the road and I'm like, I wanna fucking die, like right now. And I stayed there, cars were driving by, honking and everything. And I don't know what happened in between that but literally my car had just got out of the impound. My mom had paid for it. She didn't even have much money, but somehow she would always do something for her baby boy. And she got my, she got my car out of the impound. The day I got my car out of the impound, that's when somebody had broke into my car. Like, and it was like, can it get any worse? And that night on La Brea, on the corner of La Brea in Hollywood, I'm at the, there's like this like little shopping center and I, my car was parked, my window was busted out to the right. And, and 
literally was raining. It was 3.43 in the morning, August 2011. And it was, I yelled out, eyes bloodshot red. And I still didn't know that this was rock bottom, but I've always focused on what I don't want. And I just remember saying, okay, okay, I'm tired of fighting. I don't want to fight anymore. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be surrounded by nothing but positive people. I just, I just want to inspire people and I want to make a bunch of money, but I want the money to represent something that I passionately believe in. Just show me a sign, show me a sign, show me. And I just kept saying it over and over and over. It wasn't until a week later, until I, the, I met the, the man at the gas station and he asked me for money. And he said, and he said, do you have any money? He's just like, it was a homeless guy. And, I'm like, and he had a wad of money. I said, you have more money than me. And he goes, have you ever seen the movie Rain Man? The guy was talking to himself. Person did the exact same thing. He was like, change your mindset, change your life. Change your mindset, change your life. Change your mindset, change your life. Change your mindset. And then they walked away. And it was in that very moment, I felt like my whole entire life was a lie. And once you had that realization and you knew, okay, I need to change my mindset, what, what was that first step? Honestly, so the very first opposite thing that I did was the stairs. Normally I take the escalators because I'm lazy. I don't feel like doing it. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden it was like I had this little angel on my shoulder saying, change your mindset, change your life. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when I came to the, the escalators, I'd be like, change your mindset, change your life. And then I would just do the opposite. Normally I would use gel soap, change your mindset, change your life. So I used bar soap. And then, so I didn't know what neuropathways, I didn't know what any of that stuff. I was literally like a baby that knows how to express himself only through gaga goo goo. So I had all these crazy results to my life that people were like, how did you do it? I'm like, eh, eh, eh. But it wasn't until I started reading books and going to seminars so I could connect the dots going backwards. And, but I started with just daily things, just doing the opposite of everything I would normally do. I was just opposite, 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 opposite. But that became my new pattern. So it was easy to make different decisions with the same circumstances when I had already built the muscle of doing the opposite. And that's how I even got into this entire philosophy. I stopped making a left. So I stopped, ended up ending up in places where people who make a left end and I turn a right, whole different direction, whole different outcome, met new people, different opportunities, everything, because it's a, it was an entire world I knew nothing about. So as you're beginning to learn about neural pathways, and I'm gonna ask this question in two different ways. As you begin learning about neural pathways, what are the, um, the neurological or the belief system things that you're beginning to change? And saying the exact same, this is the exact same question but asked in a different way, what do you want to teach those kids that you can connect with that started where you started? I know you have the Youth Foundation launching this year. Absolutely. Like what, what is that like belief system mantra? It, I'm guessing is a lot more pointed than just change your mindset, change your life. Absolutely, one, it's awareness. I had no idea that this world existed outside of projects, outside of, um, you know, some of my friends with food stamps, outside of, um, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. And if you think about ABCs, the impact of ABCs, language, first there's gaga goo goo, then there's language, then there's the baby can now say ball. Now there's sentences, paragraphs, essays, books, libraries. The impact of someone growing up in a struggled household where there's fear base, insecurity base, all of that, that's a form of language. Most people don't know the language outside of that because they stay inside watch the same TV shows, listen to the same radio station, hang around the same friends, never read books and just follow wherever society says, do this, this is popular, do this, this is popular, but never really think for themselves. 
So going back to that language, which is really fascinating, I've never heard it explained like that, and I like that a lot, we can't afford this, we can't afford this, we can't afford this, becomes a, a language of communication, becomes the language of your belief system. So what is the new language that you wanna give people? You're really good at repeating things, which yeah. I think is incredibly powerful, and at the end of the day, I think, quite honestly, you are what you repeat obsessively in your head. Um, what, what are some empowering things that you would want those kids to be repeating to themselves? who they are. Because if you don't tell yourself who you are, then, then you'll allow anybody else to tell you who you are. And how do you help them find an empowering narrative to feed themselves? Um, through pff, animation, cartoons, like there's, there, there's so many different avenues, but again, they've gotta be able to relate to it. It can't just be like, oh, we're just gonna give these people what I think they need. Now, every single child has a desire inside of them. And what I, what I, what, and it irks me so much because people always speak to the needs of people. Oh, you need this or you should this and you should that. And, and, and what I want to say is there is something inside of every child and there's a desire to do something. But it gets lost because. You should do this. You should go to school and do this. You should get a good job. You should do it. And all of a sudden, they'll go to whatever has energy. Mm. Wherever the energy goes, that's where the energy flows. And, you know, what I, want, what I would really want them to know is to, to, to tell themselves who they are. Like, I am powerful. I am amazing. And th these are things that I'm literally working with with lots of parents now. And they're like, yo, within a week, he wasn't getting bullied no more. She wasn't, she wasn't saying that she's ugly anymore because she stopped listening to the outside noise and she started listening to what she told herself she was. I love your analogy of kids getting their superpowers or an adult for that matter, getting their superpowers. And you said that every superhero has to pay a price to get their power. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Superman had to pay a price, Batman. But I didn't realize this until like a few years ago. So my whole entire life, I want to be a superhero. I want to be stronger than the average man, have abs like an action figure, and save people's lives all over the world. I maintained that all the way through high school. When people started giving up and started like, oh, I'm gonna go do what my dad is doing, I'm gonna go do with what my mom is doing. When it was time to graduate and all, this, all the stuff that you do to graduate, they're like, so what are you gonna be when you get in the real world? Tell me you still don't want to be a superhero. And I'm like, I want to be stronger than the average man. I want, to, I want to have abs like an action figure. And I want to save people's lives all over the world. And I was so serious. When I left that, that's when I was stuck. That's when I was lost. When I left everything that I loved to do as a child, that's when I said I felt like something is missing the most. I like to say that anything that you love as a child is connected to your inner child, which is directly connected to source. As soon as I started doing everything that I loved, there was a surge of power, a surge of confidence. I wasn't insecure anymore because the emotion that had the most uh, dominance in my thought process and in my heart process was actually being paid attention to. You, you've said that you took total responsibility for your life. Yeah. When, when was that moment? In the car. When I, had, when I was like crying out saying, okay, okay, okay. Right before that, I was literally blaming my mom for the situation that I'm in right now. And they don't give parents a blueprint on how to raise kids. I didn't know that. So I blame my mom. My father was murdered. I blame him for certain things. Blame my girlfriend, blame this, blame that, blame. The, and I'm like, the one person I've never blamed was myself. And I was like, so maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's my fault that I'm, I am where I am. So I can't do anything about anyone else. But I can do something about me. What can I change about myself?
It's interesting, when you were in prison, you um, started making certain changes, realizing, I think you uh, obviously decided to learn French, you started yeah. using only your left hand. What is it about that mechanism of doing the thing that's different, doing the opposite? What was the result you got in prison from that? When I first got locked up, it was the, I got busted for smuggling 6.2 kilos of heroin. I didn't, so basically I'm, drive this car from here to this border, you get this much money. I didn't look in the back because I didn't want that on my conscience. So I'm just driving, driving. After the eighth time I got caught and then they x-rayed the vehicle and it was like, boom. I'm like, damn. My life is, I literally, and I, my, my daughter was just born. I'm like, man, my life is over. I had billboards, like billboards in Times Square. This is when you were modeling. Modeling stuff. So billboards, commercials out. I just interviewed with like MTV. Like, and in that moment, I'm like, I don't even know what's about to happen. But when they open up those Congo drums and they pulled out those little yellow things, and I'm like, my life is, I don't even know what they are, but my life is over. So they put me in prison. I wrote 200 people, seven people wrote me back. So just imagine the mindset of your friends. And it wasn't too many people there. My daughter's mother was there. My mom was there. My boy Troy, my brother, a couple other people. And I was like, my life is over. And I'm literally looking at the clock. When I got sentenced, <clears throat> they sentenced me till 2014, back in 2003. And I'm like, it's over. Like every dream I'd ever had, singing, modeling, acting, like any kind of inspiration, over. My daughter won't even know me. And I remember my consulate. They came in and they were like, we think you might like this book. Because by that time, I was just reading anything that would keep my mind off of being in there. I just started reading, 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 reading. I read a bunch of Agatha Christie books because they was just like imagination and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I just started reading. I read the Bible cover to cover eight times. I read the Quran cover to cover eight times. I was like, they saying the same thing. And it was like, it was very fascinating. I just kept reading and reading. I didn't know that what was filling my brain was causing an energy inside. I had none of the, because I, I wasn't aware. But then my, my consulate, they was like, we think you might like this book. Power of Positive Thinking. All I know is I'm reading this book. I'm reminded of everything that I loved as a child. I start doing it, it makes me happy, like super happy. I'm running, doing all this other stuff, all of a sudden everybody starts, there was less fights, less stabbings, less drug deals, and I didn't know that my own personal desire and joy was causing that to happen. I was just in it, doing what I love to do. And then we were allowed to watch and this was the shift. We were allowed to watch TV once a month. Shawshank Redemption came on. And Anthony Robbins said, they can take everything away from me. They can't take away my mind. As long as I'm doing everything I'm, I love, then I'm free. What I find so interesting, so you have these huge revelations, or maybe not even quite revelations, but you're certainly acting in accordance with something that's later going to serve you incredibly well. And you're saying to yourself, in prison, I'm a free man, I'm a free man, I'm a free man. Then you, um, after talking to your brother and promising him that you were really going to pour yourself into the music and all that, you come back, your music career explodes but then it ends up somehow trapping you again. So yeah. the, the thing that I hope people will really hear because your story has just enough messiness in it to really be valuable. Yeah. You come back, you get out, thank God, into music, passion. I'm singing in prison. The guy's telling me he feels free because I'm singing. I'm able to yeah. give him that gift. I'm doing the things I love, like all of it. Yeah. How does it become a trap again? When I stopped reading the book, 
I never knew, so I never heard terms, leaders or readers and all that other stuff. I didn't grow up with hearing that kind of stuff. So I thought all that was luck and it was just me. I'm like, oh, praise God. I was like, oh, God, I've got some favor on my life. That all surface level talk. So when I stopped reading the book, just like when you stop tending the, uh, the garden, those weeds are going to creep back, whether you like it or not. Because you weren't thinking about those positive no. things anymore. And I started doing old patterns, doing old things. And I didn't know that it was like a, like you brush your teeth every day. Brush your teeth every day for five years. Then a week goes by, you don't brush your teeth. You're wondering, why does my breath stink? You got to brush your teeth every day. Take a shower every day. So I didn't know you renew your mind every day. So I would read, 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 read. All this stuff would happen. Stop reading, boom, it would crash just as fast as it, uh, just as fast as it rose. So I, I wasn't aware, nor did I have people in my life to say, you know, keep reading that book. I didn't, there was, the, my mentors, pff, me, pride, ego. Because when people say, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, I now, Start listening to you're good, you're good, you're good instead of the power of positive thinking. So now my new rhythm, my new melody, I'm good. It's me. Of course. Oh, you're the man. I'm the man. Because that's what I kept listening to over and over and over. So buying into all of that became my new pattern. And that took me right back into the pattern that I had that freed me from all the stuff. So what do you do now on a daily basis? I've watched a lot of your content, so I've seen a lot of this, yeah. but what do you do on a daily basis? You obviously take really good care of your body. Absolutely. Um, I know that you go for rides. Like, What is it that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? For somebody who's watching this or listening to this, what are those actual activities or mantras or whatever it is that you okay. use to renew your mind every day? All right, cool. So I got this thing, I call it Panda Power Hour just because I love pandas and I just like to, I like to, anything that I do, I like to make sure that it's aligned with what I love. And power hour is like your first hour of the day. And you know, I, I'm a true believer in, in uh, momentum. And so what I do every night before I go to bed, I'll write a list of things. What's on the list is, irre is irrelevant because your brain responds to progress. Like you go five days and you don't get anything productive done. Your countenance is very different than you go five days and you book this appointment, you get this client, you get this, and all these things are happening. The, your physiology changes, your energy changes, everything. So what I did is I just create a list that, and it's something that's connected to health, something that's connected to my mind, something that's connected to my spirit. It doesn't matter what it is, it's anything where this is being activated this is being activated and, and you know, my spirit, my, you know, my aura is being activated. So I'll write a list. It'll be like 30, 40 things. And it won't even have to be things that are really massive because your brain doesn't know what big and small is. We say that. It just knows progress and it'll follow the momentum wherever, wherever you focus it. And I'll put on that list 30 things. Before I go to bed, I look at a picture of my, uh, look at a picture of my daughter. I look at a, just get myself in the, in the emotion of love, something that just makes me really happy. And then I'll look at the list. Because normally if I look like, like lists and percentages and charts and stuff, I'll shut down really quick. So I've literally got to create the emotion, the, the, the anchor for what this list means to me energetically. So I'll look at all the stuff that I love, then I'll look at the list. Look at the stuff that I love, then I'll look at the list. Look at the stuff that I love, then I'll look at the list. When the list starts taking on the same energy as the stuff that I love, then I go to sleep. When you go to sleep, your mind goes to work. And when I wake up, there's just an energy, 4.30, 5.30 in the morning, no alarm clock, just bam, I just pop up. The overflow 
of who I, what I create, the energy that I create in myself in the morning spills out into people, spills out into, to, to, you know, income opportunities, spills out into the world. And the other stuff on the list is irrelevant. What's the trait that you've cultivated in yourself that you think is most responsible for your success? Honestly, the, the ability to love no matter what. That is not what I expected you to say. The ability to love no matter what, because I came from such a hateful environment and I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on while I was in insecurity. I don't love myself. I have a high um, hairline. I'm going to be bald by the time I'm 20. And that's all I'm hearing. My slightly crooked nose. I don't love myself. I don't love my body. So I'm just eat all this food like coming from that environment. And then learning to love every aspect of myself, whether you like it or not, and just truly learning to love myself. And then being in a situation where I was in business with someone that had a very similar, very similar path and very similar growth of success. But it seemed like something was holding us both down. And I remember one day we were going on a retreat. And I looked in the mirror and I said, you know what? Him being a friend to me has nothing to do with me being a friend to him. So I'm just going to love no matter what. And I remember saying that and something leaped out of my chest. It was like this weird, thick. And I felt light. I felt very different. Now, that day I posted. And this is before I was getting thousands of likes and thousands of shares. That day I posted something. On Facebook, I tagged maybe 48 people and got maybe 30 something likes. That's when nobody was messing with your boy. <laughs> and that weekend when we went on that trip, I was like, you know, him being a friend of me has nothing to do with me being a friend of him. So I'm just going to love no matter what. And I'm just going, no one state, no one, I will never give anyone else permission to change who I am. And when I just made that decision to love no matter what, even if you hurt me, I know deep down inside that that's not really you. And just to come from, from the place of loving no matter what and really being able to ex accept people for who they are, how they are and how they are not without any expectation whatsoever, Three days later, I went on Facebook and I posted the exact same message, but I didn't tag anybody, but I felt different. Feeling is the secret. I felt different where I was coming from saying the exact same thing. I posted and it was like 475 likes, like within like an hour. I'm like, what the hell happened? I was speaking to my life coach at the time, Monica Zanz, and she was like, well, what did you do different? I was like, well, I had this conversation. She was like, she was like, you released hate from your heart. And that was the grip hold that you had, resentment. Like what it takes to hold on. Remember I told you, we're not created to be keepers. We're created to be givers. You and I, we can't hold that water. It's got to come out. Can't hold, like all that stuff you hold on to. And I was holding on to resentment. But the power that it takes to hold on to resentment is the same power that's needed to sustain at the next level. And I didn't even know that I was holding on to the, the universe of the next level inside of that resentment. When I let that go, anything that I was a part of tripled in, within three months. People are like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was the only thing I did was just like release the resentment that was inside. No, I totally get it. Before I ask my last question, tell these guys where they can find you online. Um, you can definitely go on uh, GarenJones.com, uh, G A R R A I N Jones.com. Um, on Instagram, Garen.Jones. Facebook, Garen Jones. Snapchat, Garen Jones. Love it, man. All right. My last question. What's the impact that you want to have on the world? 
The impact that I want to have on the world that I'm going to have, that I am having, is creating a space where people realize that their purpose is not out, their purpose is in as the highest version of themselves. And what I mean by that is I've always looked for, oh, my purpose is this girl or this job or this money. My purpose is to save the children and all this. But when I became and I'm working towards the fullest expression of myself, that's the kind of person that has all those things. And knowing that there, five years from now, that there's a stronger, quicker, faster, more impactful Garen out there, it drives me wild. So I'm reading and studying, oh, who's, my, who's gonna be my next mentor? What's this next thing? What's this next seminar? For people to understand and discover that within themselves, it's everything that they're looking for, everything that they've been looking for has been inside of this, them this entire time and creating way through personal example, through, through any platform for people to discover that and just hear that and, 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 and really get the essence of, wow, it was me the entire time. And I truly do feel like a person that gets that and understands that, they will impact a million lives. So if you get a million people to get that and understand that, that thing is gonna spread like, it's gonna spread like crazy, but it's got, people have got to see it, mm. you know? When you see that, now you'll have a different perspective. I love that. Garen, thank you so much for coming on, man. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Guys, like I said, this is one of the most insane Rags to Riches stories I've ever heard in my life. You've got to check it out. It is to see how far you can go in one lifetime is absolutely incredible. And the fact that he's stumbled along the way and picked himself back up and had to really figure this out so that he could, as he said, renew his mind over and over and over and constantly tend that garden. And the way that he does it and the passion and enthusiasm that he brings and the way that he welcomes people into his world is absolutely beautiful to witness. Check him out, follow him, you will see for yourself exactly what I'm talking about. All right, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. Garen, thank you, man. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching and being a part of this community. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. You're gonna get weekly videos on building a growth mindset, cultivating grit, and unlocking your full potential.